Noted, 7-19-2014. Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Dooley. I'm here with the amazing Lindsay Foster. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and Lindsay, state who you are for the camera, just to where you're from. I'm Lindsay Crossman, and I'm from Brownville, Vermont. We're very lucky to have her. Uh, she's being very forthright here at the NKT seminar about some of her history. She has some problems with breathing and some dynamic core stability. And I wanted to show some ways that you can teach breathing and teach how to uh, be able to uh, release the diaphragm to be able to help with uh, some of your patterns for intrinsic core stability. Can you tell us a little bit about your problems with breathing? I was diagnosed with asthma during my last trimester of pregnancy um, and acid reflux. And I've had it ever since. And that was 33 years ago. 33 years of not being able to really take a good quality breath. Um, what ends up happening in pregnancy is the diaphragm gets pushed superiorly, and during breathing, the diaphragm has to drop inferiorly to be able to help you uh, build intra-abdominal pressure and decrease the intrathoracic pressure, so the lungs can fill with air. Instead, people start to breathe from the chest. They breathe upwards to try to increase that, um, that pressure system. So unfortunately, it doesn't work so well, especially if you're trying to create dynamic core stability. Uh, the reason why the acid reflux can be involved with people that have a tight diaphragm is because the esophagus goes through the diaphragm. And if your diaphragm tightens around the esophagus, you end up with the facilitation and inability to properly digest food and let it release into the stomach, ending up with acid reflux. Um, now, you also have something very interesting that we saw in your breathing assessment. So if you don't mind laying like, flat on your back, whichever one you like. And Lindsay's nice enough to expose her abdomen for us. And if you come in close, you can actually see something that's very interesting. And as you're breathing, you can see her heart beat pretty steadily. And what ends up happening if there's a, a quite a heavy heartbeat, and actually this was a lot worse, this pulse, before we corrected her. But um, the pulse was very significant because the right and left crura of the diaphragm can actually contract around the abdominal aorta, increasing that pressure and making for a more visible pulse. This is another diagnostic sign that there could be a possible diaphragmatic facilitation. So if you're trying to release the diaphragm, one of the things that you can do for a tight diaphragm is uh, be able to increase the, the reflexive ability for it to drop inferiorly. Some cases of, of other things, objective findings for the diaphragm, would be people that tend to hold their breath, uh, especially holding their breath in. Also, if on the sides of the abdomen you start to see a rib flare, that could be a sign of the diaphragm facilitated. Also, if they have T6, T7 constant uh, facilitation. Now, on her breathing, you'll notice she has some tenting. But she'll stay kind of tight through here, and as she inhales, it'll dome a bit. And Lindsay, this was much worse earlier. We definitely have it's been true. working on it. So, um, in order to release the diaphragm, what you can do flexibly is find where the diaphragm is innervated by phrenic nerve, which is pretty close to one of these dented spaces. So you come on the lateral abdomen and you start to stimulate a space where you find a sore spot or a little dent. This is quite close to where the phrenic nerve, that's it. <laughs> and um, I, think, I believe in DNS, they call this the breathing zone. So you start to stimulate that as she tries to breathe in and up to the ceiling. And we're trying to fill this like a dome. Proprioceptively, you can cue them to breathe through here. We'll get to more of that in a second. If I'm wanting to release the diaphragm, I don't have to dig my fingers in underneath her costal margin. It's actually quite painful. So what I can do for Lindsay is have her reach this arm down, have her turn her head this way, and as she coughs, that creates an eccentric contraction of the diaphragm, and I can actually push this and flick this, creating a myotidic reflex with the diaphragm. And then go ahead and cough for me. <coughs> and one more time. <coughs> it's an incredible way, it's very effective of being able to release the diaphragm. As we come back to center, we start to look and start to cue her, and you can already see she's doming much better. But I can proprioceptively cue her by adding a little pressure here and saying breathe into my fingers. You see she struggles a bit and tries to go into the chest. You start at the front, both at the thorax and at the lumbopelvic region here. And we're looking for the nice uniform doming. As you go laterally, 
you want her to breathe into your hands laterally. And you progress by going posteriorly. I'm blocking her a little bit, so I'm going to stand up. And breathe into my fingers here. If you find they're not quite successful with the posterior part, don't worry, it's the hardest one to get. So you can have them flip over onto the belly. Use crocodile breathing, hands under forehead when you're breathing. Now we try to relax through the thorax as much as possible. People with thoracic extension issues and ability to properly mobilize the thorax might have breathing problems as well in chronic diaphragm facilitation. So she goes right to here, all right? So try to relax here. Good. And breathing through here. Breathing's not just about an A to P movement, anterior to posterior movement of the belly. It's a 360 motion for stability. So we definitely want to work on her ability to, to extend the thorax and the mobility through here. We want a nice mobile thorax. And the diaphragm's attaching over to T6, so um, and as well as the lumbar vertebra. So the diaphragm's not just a breathing muscle, but a very important spinal stabilizer. And as we return you back to your back, you wanna watch and look at the domi and look at the beat. And I would check in with her over the next few days to see if her acid reflex is better or worse. Much better domi, look at that fill. Nice, nicely done. Made her giggle a little too. That's core activation, by the way. So, Stay in touch with your client. Uh, look for a couple of these objective findings of acid reflux coupled with a really visible abdominal pulse. Her pulse is almost you know, invisible now. It's only really seen at the very end of your exhalation, which I'll take as progress. And she's breathing much better through here and not as much through the chest. But uh, these are great starting points for coaching uh, diaphragmatic breathing. And uh, I hope you found this helpful. Do we know it?